to preview the matchup of 49ers versus Lions in the NFC Championship game, I think we should give our top five most important matchups of the game. And that's what I titled the stream. I titled the stream the most important matchups in 49ers versus Lions. I'll give you my top five from five to one. And because I know you haven't, I didn't tell you this beforehand. So I'm just telling you this right now. While I'm doing that, think of your top five. I'll give mine quickly. You can give yours and then we can discuss. Okay. And then are you going from five to one or one yeah. to five? Or are they all the same? I'm going five to one. So you get a little, a little suspense. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Cause, everyone, Cause everyone wants to know what is Kevin Kruger's top five 49ers matchups. Well, there's almost 400 people in the room right now going, I need me some Kevin Kruger top five matchup breakdown. I need a fourth year uh, construction management major at Cal Poly to um, bloviate on his top five matchups. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead, Kev. All right. Fire away, my kid. Top five, five to one. All right. Number five. Five. Okay. Brandon (laughs) Ayuk. Versus any Lions defensive back that he faces. Debo Samuel, obviously, is potentially out this week. Wait a uh, second. Joel- Brandon Ayuk against any receiver. Oh, no, any DB. Any DB that he that faces. He matches up. Yeah, right. So basically, Ayuk slash the pass. There we go. <laughs> Long on the clap. <laughs> Debo Samuel obviously could potentially be out. Ayuk didn't think that, but even if he's playing in this game, okay, you know, about a guy who's being he's playing because it's a championship game. You don't know what that means. You know, maybe he's not as big of a role for the passing game because he's you know partially injured, or maybe he gets re-injured. So, I think Brandon Ayuk definitely has to play a huge role in this game. Um, the so, the I say, so your first one is Brandon Ayuk against any. Whoever he lines up against. Yeah. Whoever, because, you know, you can't predict who he's, they're not going to like shadow him. Like it's going to be whoever he lines up against. Kindle Vildor. Yeah. Or Chauncey Chauncey Gardner Johnson or whatever. Um, So that, because the Lions' weakness is their passing game. So it's going to be important for the Niners to get their pass defense. Their pass defense is is the the worst part of their team. Um, And the Niners struggled last week. Ayuk had three catches on six targets. Um, but, you know, the one thing I do know is that Brock Purdy always play. Whenever Brock Purdy plays well, Ayuk has a good game, too. There's there's just like there's a connection between the two. When Brock Purdy has a big passing game, Ayuk has a big day. It's just it, it's it happens more times than it doesn't. Um, and I would like to see the the Niners, you know, blow up the the passing game with Ayuk. And I think that they can do that, especially with the weak. 40 or weak Lions secondary. Okay. Number four. Are you ready for number four? Number four. Wait a second. Number four. Go ahead. Number four. This is very similar. Amon Ross St. Brown versus any 49ers defensive back. Okay. All right. The reason like being is the Lions. Thank you. All right, all right. We, we can, that's the last time we're doing that. That's it's too long. <laughs> um, do not the Lions, tell me how, the Lions do not tell me this. how to run my show. No. <laughs> okay, the Lions so love I'm on guy, Raw right? versus Charvarius Ward. Right. The Lions love this guy. They give him. They gave him. I think 14 targets last week against the Bucks, and he's just a target machine. They're just going to use him. Uh, today in the presser, someone asked Kyle. How how were you planning on stopping Amon Ross St. Brown or something along the lines of that? <laughs> right, I heard that. It, <laughs> it was a funny question, the way it was worded, just to say the least. But what they what he said is, well, you can't really stop him. Like you can't you can't really stop an individual player. You got you can only try to stop the scheme. And it's true. The the Lions are going to get the ball to Amon Ross St. Brown. There's just no way you can get around that. And they love throwing the ball to this guy. They're gonna chuck it up to him. He's gonna catch it if he gets his hands on it. So it's gonna be really imperative for the 49ers to stop Amon Ra St. Brown in this game. Yep. All right. Number three. Number three. Bosa versus Sewell and Chase Young versus Decker. So that the edges versus the tackles. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Decker and Sewell, Sewell are the number one and number 10 ranked offensive lineman, which Sewell's the number one offensive lineman per PFF, and Decker's the number 10 offensive tackle. Uh, I meant offensive tackle, not offensive lineman. Um, Bosa, obviously, you know, Bosa's been playing well. I personally have felt like Chase Young really hasn't lived up to the billing that he was, you know, he was given when the Niners traded for him. He, right. he doesn't seem to be getting the, the amount of pressures that, we all anticipated. And even when he gets pressures, I've, I haven't seen him come down with like a big sack or a big tackle for loss. So, you know, that's a huge matchup. Can the Niners get pressure on Jared Goff, who is not a mobile quarterback? He can't move his feet. Um, but the Lions, they have, they have the best tackles in football. They have probably the best offensive line in football. So that's a huge matchup. Um, number two, I have Hutchinson versus McKivitz. Um, I was debating on putting this uh, number one, Aiden Hutchinson is obviously just a game wrecker. You know, he's, he's a young kid from Michigan now in Detroit, like just a, you know, he's just a, I think you refer to him as country strong. Like he's just a man. Right. And Colt McKivitz is, has been struggling. I, I'll say it. He has been struggling this year. Um, Hutchinson against the Buccaneers had a sack, a tackle for loss and three quarterback hits. So if you're going to, you know, if he's going to be wrecking, the offense or the Niners offensive game plan all game. It's, it's going to be a long day for the 49ers. Uh, and then my number one matchup before we get to yours would be Gibbs and Montgomery versus the the 49ers front seven. And more specifically Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs is just, I, I think he's one of the, I think he's going to be one of the best backs in football. He is just so explosive. I've I, he just moves so fast and he's young and he has fresh legs and he has the freshest legs that you're going to find at this point in the year. Right. He's he's just so explosive and I just cannot see him not having a huge impact in this game. And the Niners run defense has been sloppy. They gave up over 100 yards to Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is a good he's a good back. Get, don't get me wrong, but he is not you know, he's not someone who should be gashing your defense for six yards of carry. Jameer Gibbs had six yards to carry against the Buccaneers. And if the Niners don't, you know, tighten that up in the run defense, um, it could be a, it could be a bad ending. That's my top five. Good. Those are good. Those are all really good. Um, good stuff. Good stuff from Kev. There. Absolutely. Now I'll take the applause. I'll take the applause now. I'll take the applause now. Or. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's too much. <laughs> or maybe how about this one? Is it the T Mobile <laughs> ad? Like, are we like sponsored or like what's <laughs> Well, I could have said, you know what? Okay. That's like that's not good. Do you that's have your good. do you have your own top five ready? Um yes, I do. Okay. Here we go. Number five on my list. Um I'm going with Fred Warner against Sam Laporta. It's a good one. Uh, Laporta is a tremendous player, and I think the 49ers are going to have to limit him because I don't – Josh Reynolds, eh, ain't bad, but it's to me – and Jamison Williams is a burner, but um, it's Amon Ra and then Laporta. Laporta's a great receiver going back to high school. Uh, he was a great receiver at, at Iowa, and he's been a great receiver here and uh, at Detroit. So I would say Laporta on on – on Fred Warner. Um, the one thing about, about um, Laporta is he can kind of vary his play speed. And so it's hard. He's a hard guy to cover. Cause you just think that he's going full tilt and then he, he gets the separation, you know, and that's the one thing. I mean, he doesn't just, he doesn't just run good routes. He's got great hands and then he can separate at what the ball in the air. So Laporta against Fred Warner is number one. Um, number two, or number five, that was number five. Number four would be Amon Ra against Mooney Ward. You know, Amon Ra, St. Brown, has got great body control. He's got a plays with a chip on his shoulder. He's not the biggest guy. He's, you know, he was a fourth-round pick out of USC, and he's been trying to prove everybody wrong ever since. And Mooney Ward is the Niners' best corner, and I think this is going to be a really, really, really tough cover for Mooney Ward because he doesn't have the body control or the footwork that Amon Ra has. So the, he's going to need help. He's going to need someone to stay between Goff and Amon Ra. They may need to bracket him. Uh, you know, the guys up front have got to limit those windows and try to hurry up Goff and so he can't play the game on his own terms time-wise. And, 
And when the ball comes out, speed them up a little bit and move them off the spot and all those things. So I'll say Amon Ra against Mooney Ward, but in reality, it's going to take more than just Mooney Ward. Number three on the list, I'm going to go Debo Samuel against Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I mean, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson has been circling this game for months. He wants to kill Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel is the Niners' big play guy, and he's got a bum shoulder, and yet um, you know he wants to play. You know he wants to answer. I think that that right there, I mean, can Debo play hurt? And can he be effective playing hurt? And can C.J. Gardner-Johnson get a big lick on him? Um, you know, are they going to be talking trash? Is he is C.J. Gardner-Johnson going to take a late hit on him? I mean, he, he hates Debo. And I don't think Debo likes him too much either. So there's not fake animosity. There's real animosity. Okay, so that's number three. Number two, I'm going to go with Colton McKivitz against Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson's got a motor. He's quick. He's just, uh, I don't think McKivitz can handle him one-on-one, -on -one, but if you, if you chip him, if you give, uh, if you put another guy on that side, uh, you help out McKivitz, I think you're going to need to help him. In fact, if I were the Niners, I would slide the protection towards Hutchinson every time and let, um, Trent Williams go one-on-one -on -one with Josh Pascal the whole day. Just say big Trent, you're going to handle Pascal. Uh, he's usually the right defensive end. Trent's usually, uh, you know, always the left tackle. And then Hutchinson lines up on the other side, though they will move Hutchinson around. But I anticipate Hutchinson against McKivitz. Um, so McKivitz is going to need help. You know, so once again, it's not just Hutchinson against McKivitz. It's Hutchinson against McKivitz and help. It's not just Amon Ra against Mooney Ward. It's against it's Amon Ra against Moody, Wo Mooney Ward and help. Okay, so but the number one matchup, and I can't believe you didn't have it in the and top just, five. Let me just let me just add something to that. Amon Ra, he'll line up in the slot too. So is does does do you anticipate Mooney Ward coming into the slot to guard him? Do you think he's going to shadow him, or do you think it, it's going to be? You think he's I think it'll be Lenore. Inside? Yeah, so I think it'll a, be Lenore. Yeah. There's a good chance that a lot of these snaps could be against not Mooney Ward. Right, right. right. Um, and I love um Lenore's chances of of. You know, probably the best. I think Lenore is probably the guy you want on him, but um, but I think if I'm the Niners, I you know sometimes I'll be happy just not matching up every time with Mooney. If 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 it's Ambry, it's Ambry. If it's uh, if it's Mooney, it's Mooney. If it's Lenore, it's Lenore. Um, okay. So number the number one number, matchup, number one, number one matchup, and I'm really Rumble. surprised. Little surprised you didn't have it. Um, What's that? Little surprised. <laughs> Surprised or disappointed? I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little. It's okay, not really a surprise. It's more. I. Yeah, it seems like it's. I. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to talk to your mother after the show. Now, uh, okay. So this is what I'm going with. Um, Jonah Jackson, the left guard, is out, and Frank Ragnow, the center, who's great, is banged up. And the uh, Lions are going to have to play Coyote Awasika at left guard against um, against uh, Javon Hargrave. And I think that's going to be where the Niners win this game. I like the Niners inside of Armstead and Hargrave to be able to beat Coyote Awasika, Graham Glasgow, and, and Frank Ragnow. Ragnow's tremendous. Don't get me wrong. First round pick, blue chipper, tough as hell. But he's got multiple injuries, and Jonah Jackson's out. And I heard Lomas Brown, who's the former line offensive lineman, who does is on the broadcast team. Uh, he was on with John Lund earlier today, and he was talking about how how his concern is uh, the 49ers maybe putting Greenlaw or um, Warner in the A gap. He's concerned about a gap pressure in the face of Jared Goff and Jared Goff does not move well laterally. And to me, if the 49ers can get pressure in the a gaps and in the face of Jared Goff, they're going to win this game. And if they can't and Jared Goff's allowed to sit back there and just survey the field all night, they're going to lose. So I'll take, uh, I'll take, you know, really it's, it's Hargrave against Awasika as the premier matchup in this game. Do you think that he will win that matchup? Because we have not yes, seen a lot of pressure from the inside so no. far. 
No, but I think that I think I think the Niners will get there, and if they don't get there with four, I think they'll send Warner or Greenlaw on a gap blitzes, and I think they're going to pressure Goff in his face, and I think um, he's going to throw the 49ers a couple interceptions because of the pressure that he faces. I mean, you got to remember this: the Niners haven't played a lot of a lot of stunting games, but they're great at doing it. And the reason they haven't done it is because they've gone up against so many mobile quarterbacks. But Goff's not one of them. So you're they're going to play games up front. They're going to be coming from all angles. Um, it's going to you know I, I watched practice today, and I watched the D line specifically. And Chris Kosarek is just screaming and yelling at the top of his lungs at these guys. And um, they're going to turn it on. I, I like the 49ers defensive line to. Bosa, Armstead, Hargrave, Chase Young, Robert Beal, Givens, Kinlaw, Gregory, Sebastian Joseph, Day. Um, they're going to come firing in this game, and I, I think they're going to get pressure on Goff in his face. One thing I will I will say to that is, one, I knew Frank Ragnow, but when I did a little bit of a deeper dive on him, just kind of looking him up, you can make an argument that he's the best offensive lineman in football, this year at least. He, he, center. Is, he is. Yeah, I mean, he is just a... He's a great offensive lineman. So definitely banged up or not banged up. If Frank Ragnow's playing, he's going to, he's going to have an impact. Also, no doubt. The, Pack, the Packers offensive line is, is pretty weak. It's, it's not a, it's a decent offensive line, but it's not great. And the Niners really struggled. They had zero sacks on Jordan Love last week. Zero. Well, but you know, he's a mobile the- quarterback, so it's different, but still, no, no, but you know, Packers offensive line was number two in the NFL and pass block win rate. This Lions offensive line is 14th in pass block win But rate. there's a difference. There's there's just a difference. I mean, do, would, you, would you think that- I, what I what I th- what I think the difference is is that the Lions have just absolute run blocking masters. Where they if they if they get a lead and they can run it all night, they're the this this 49er defense front is going to be challenged. But if the Niners can get the lead and make this team throw it, I think uh, the Niners will be able to get more pressure on Goff than they did on uh, Love. 